Oh! Oh! It's you! <laughs> How did I meet David Allen? David didn't have a microphone stand. Nobody thought that he, you know, to get a stand. So I said, well, anybody, can somebody hold the microphone for David? And I was the closest person to the, so I was, yeah, sure. At the time, I was Mike Stand. <laughs> Began again in San Francisco, where I had moved to the West Coast, and uh, once again, Harry and Jillian walked into the record store I was working in, and it was like the 12 years heaven. He was, oh, Michael, what are you doing here? Good to see you. And the, and then I just got sucked back in by the Octave Doctors. So they, they knew I would be of use, so I became useful. As just as a, as a driver or a helper or you know flunky, run around, do errands, whatever I could do to help, because it was something I enjoyed to do, because I loved the music and the people. Gong reformed and came, and I was the the, the the flunky assistant tour guy on the Gong tour. And all this time, nobody ever, even me, I I had stopped playing guitar, bass guitar, and I was happy to just be the the, the luckiest Gong fan in the world. I thought, that's great. Did he wow, get to ride around in a bus across America with Gone? What, <laughs> what could be better? Then one night, uh, David was in San Francisco doing a solo show, in Santa Cruz actually, and uh, we were out on the back patio talking to some young, young fans, and one of them looked at me and asked me if I played music with David, and I just, <laughs> David, I don't mean no. Um, but, being, uh, I'd had a few beers and I just kind of said, David, why don't we go into a studio tomorrow night and record a song? And he said, great. So we did that and it turned into a long jam, which turned into an album, which became Money Doesn't Make It, the University of Errors. And that turned into a live band and uh, we've been doing it off and on since 1998. And here we are. Magical things happen around David and Jilly, around Gong. Just for whatever reason, whatever needs to appear, just appears. So, uh, we're gonna go into the studio to record, and we had a drummer, Pat, Pat Thomas, and it was just gonna be the three of us to record a song. And Pat calls me up Saturday morning, the day of the, of the session, and goes, Michael, you know, I'm a little worried because you, you haven't played music in a long time and I think we need another musician. So my friend Allison suggested this guy Josh Pollock. Do you know him? Go, Josh Pollock? Yeah, I was at his wedding. I mean, Josh is my friend. Um, sure, I'll call him. So I called Josh Saturday morning 11 o'clock. What are the odds that he's going to be home? What, what are the odds? So he answers the phone. And, hey Josh, how are you? What are you doing tonight? How'd you like to, to co come to a recording studio with David Allen and me and Pat? And he goes, yeah, sure. So that was that. That's where we got Josh. And um, he came and we played, and David was not impressed with Josh at all. Not impressed. He just 
I asked after we played, oh, God, David, you know, what did you think of Josh? Wasn't he great? He goes, mm, it was all right. It was all right. Take me for a goo. But why do people always say I down here as I'm Frank and I? Big giant monsters live with me, but I don't want to set them free. But why do people always say I was down here as I'm Frank and I? I know that you know that we know that they know. So that, yeah, that's the beginning of Josh Pollock. And of course, then David started listening to the recordings and he realized that, that Josh is just fabulous and the, the two of them, their guitars meshed together like apples and, and, uh, apples and um, cinnamon. Um, and it just kept going from there because the, the music, the chemistry that happened that night in the studio, the jam session, propelled it to be a live band and, and of course then we had the same drummer problems that Gong had, you know, we always needed a new drummer <laughs> and invariably every time a drummer would show up who was perfect and took us to the next level that we had to go musically as a band to the point where now we have, uh, we have Warren Hubel. wants to be looking very much to the future mm -hmm. and the time present as well, being here and now. And people must know that something very terrible has happened to me in the past uh, two years. And I've been killed in a car accident and I've been brought back. And I felt quite empty in music uh, since this experience. And uh, I'm very grateful to Patrice for allowing me to work in his lighting team, which has helped me enormously get back to being an active person. Mm. But musically, there I was doing some solo concerts again, and wow, what a pleasure it is for me to have John Philip coming back again and helping me out. Mm. Inside our hearts, inside our hearts, will you be? 
uh, we were at Tabarka in Tunisia uh, in 1973 and I was 12 and you know there I was with all these incredible stars around me uh, among them Miles Davis and, and Gong and uh, who else I can't remember. Ravi Shankar, uh, Manu Trust uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, so many people, so many interesting people to meet. Uh, one night, I went to the Gong concert. Well, I don't know exactly how it happened, but next thing I knew, I was on stage beside Tim, asking, asking him if I could touch and feel his synthesizer. And that was that was right in the middle of the gig. And I, th I think this could only could only happen in Tabarka because it was such an open place. And and he said yes. And so I started jamming with the guys for 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 five or ten minutes. And that was really magic. So just tell me what is the, what is this synthesizer you're using here? Well, it's, a, it's a little Yamaha thing that it's not manufactured anymore. Uh -huh. it stopped it for about 20 years now. Uh -huh. it's, big, it's a great shame because uh, when I lose this one, I'm going to cry <laughs> because it's it's obviously been my companion all over the world. And uh, well, first of all, I'm a self-taught musician and I don't know how to write music. Uh, and the only way I've been able to approach music is through improvisations. Tim gave me a, an incredible chance to, ex to, to express myself. He was like being the co-pilot of a spaceship. It has this extra element that's almost completely unique. This sort of surrealist, uh, psychedelic element. With with also a little dose of spirituality and yeah. mysticism thrown yeah, in. Yeah, the philosophical, psychedelic, surrealist, dadaist, uh, elevating element. That's what we we what we all love. We're kind of like a mutual appreciation society. Yeah, and that's why Gas is such a good name. Gong Appreciation Society. I mean, in a way, we're all members. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I think Mike was saying earlier today that um, you can join Gong, but you can never leave. Yeah. So certainly, you know, we we never we never broke up. No, you just drifted apart. <laughs> yeah, people drifted off and did their own thing. But I think everything that every member of Gong has done individually has an element of Gonginess about it. I always said, uh, never say never. So um, far out, near it in. Back to where we are, hello, to the new dimension. Goodbye to the old confusion, I think there's a song in there. I don't go, my old friend, I don't go. My old friend, John. Goodbye to the old confusion. Goodbye to the old. Goodbye to the old illusion. Goodbye to the old. Hello to the new dimension. Hello to the new. Hello to the new. Direction I love to hear. Sometimes it takes a while to get back into tune. Sometimes you sit and stare and I don't know what to do.
Chez moi, nous buvons dans le même verre. Au fond, ne sommes-nous pas faits de la même eau Moi dans ma peau, elle en sa fibre de roseau, nous éclusons. <rire> 